Howdy, y'all. Hi, guys. It's Ryan. And Angela. From Arnie Music. Yes. Deep in the heart of Texas. Exactly. Canton, Texas. In water logged Texas. Water soaked Texas. It's been oh, my goodness. a flood. I'm about to build me an ark. Yeah. Because it's crazy. We need to be able to get home. I know. Insanity. So much rain here. Which is good. Yeah. We need the rain. It was super dry a couple of years ago. Yes. So. And yeah. I'd rather have, uh, I guess, the water than the wildfires. Yes, that's true. Yeah, it was got, it was so bad that the Red River was like, you could drive across it. Oh, yeah. Remember? Completely dry almost, so. Alrighty, this is number 30-something. Uh-huh. I think four. I think it's 34. I think yeah. you're right. Indeed. So, let's get right to our questions. First, we have Adam Lamar, Man with a Beard. Yes. If a guitar player use a, uses a distortion pedal for his or her, look at there, because some hers do play guitar gain sound what's the benefit of running a traditional guitar amp rather than driving the cabinet with a power amp like mm -hmm. a crown qsc etc well all of those like the crowns and qsc do have their solid state power so i think it's the using a tube amp is going to color the sound still even if you're using your distortion the tube amp is going to affect mm -hmm how it sounds, I believe. Because, you know, I mean, you've probably done this too, but you take any distortion pedal you got and plug it into different heads with the same cab, it sounds different. Right. So the guts and the circuitry and the tubes of the guitar amp head are actually gonna have a type of sound to color it with. Not that you couldn't use a solid state power section like that, what you're talking about. I think you could do that, obviously, mm -hmm. but I just don't think it's gonna get the result that's pleasing to most Guitar players. Yeah, probably not. Probably not. So, uh, there's my answer, Adam. Yeah. Next question. All right. All right, Blaine Ludman. Are y'all Elvis Ooh. or Beatles people? Not because of UK versus USA or that Elvis stole the blues, which I have issues with. <laughs> I'd have to go with Elvis just because he could put on a great show. Basically, bled for the fans as rockers that came after him, too, from Van Halen to Slipknot. Beatles were better writers, but only certain points or side projects like Yoko's there's conundrum Elvis wrote I think um, Elvis for the Beatles I really don't necessarily care for either one actually I wouldn't classify myself as an Elvis fan nor a Beatles fan <laughs> I don't know I think because I when I was a kid we listened to more Elvis mm -hmm. than the Beatles because that style of music both of my parents liked um, and a lot of his movies, like, I mean, I grew up watching all, all of his movies. Elvis just, did make more movies. Yeah. And so I just, in my, just for my experience, not that the Beatles didn't make an impact on the music I listened to, cause we did listen to, you know, I want to hold your hand and, you know, um, it just, there's so many Beatles songs that are just, you could just pop them, just pop them off. But I would I would go with Elvis only because my personal experience, my family mm -hmm. watched and listened to a lot of like we had the gospel album and right. you know it was just you know stuff that we just listened to more and you know my parents kind of even though Elvis had his issues it wasn't so blatant in the seventies as the Beatles were with the um, drugs and stuff like that so yeah. I, you know, there was always that, and, um, so, uh, yeah. If you had to pick one. You're... I'd have to pick Elvis, um, only because he just, in my mind, that's the first th out of the two pop out the strongest influence in my childhood that mm -hmm. I, I know that I, I was around the most. Elvis is, uh, no doubt a, a great performer. Mm -hmm. uh, I think as a musical group, you know, the Beatles or better musicians oh, yeah. <laughs> than Elvis. Mm -hmm. Elvis is a superior performer, hence why he was able to make so many movies and yeah. all that kind of stuff. But from a musical, pure music thing, you know. Elvis was like the, and I hate to do this, it sounds so bad, but comparatively, he was, well, he was, I mean, people do compare him with Michael Jackson, but Michael Jackson did write, like, a lot of songs, and he co-wrote a lot of songs. But he could play any instrument. But he can play an instrument. But he's kind of like a little Britney Spears-ish of kind this of. generation. 
you know. Elvis, yeah, he's kind of a... Because it was just all about the performance. It wasn't this... In, the artist was the performance and the looks. And because, I mean, for me as a girl, Elvis was hot. Jailhouse Rock Elvis. Yeah, he was a hottie. <laughs> yeah, young Elvis. <laughs> young Elvis was a hottie. Not, you know, full-on jumper, 1970s, you know, bloated Elvis. but Died on a toilet. But, Elvis. like, you know, 50s, 60s Elvis... You know, Viva Las Vegas, I was, I swooned. Like, I was, I was sold. You know, I wanted to be Anne Margaret <laughs> and be dancing with them on the stage. So, yeah, he was, a, he's a little bit, you know, where, you know, the Beatles today would be more of your, like, Metallica. Like, they would be this group that everybody kind of knows and everybody can sing their songs and there's great musicians. So, but not that everybody likes. And Elvis or, is a pop star. And Elvis is a pop star. So, manufactured yeah. that sounds so horrible i hate it to does. downgrade the the because you know Brittany lost her lost her grip there and both so did elvis <laughs> yeah yeah you know, but he went all the way yeah he did <laughs> so and they both got bloated they both went the way Blew of the up. alcohol so there you go good question though very good yeah uh next question p man 0856 perry r from southern new jersey there you Southern go. New Jersey. That's cool. Thoroughly enjoyed your engaging and passionate reply to my inquiry about homeschooling your sons. So it's encouraging to see parents who are proactive, respecting their children's education. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Who recognize how impressive their educational environment can be, not only to their academics, but uh, more significantly, their personalities. As you eloquently stated, parents must protect them from any influential jackasses. Jackassery. Yes. Three. Nicely put. I think you'll agree that after parenting, educator is the most important job in the world. Mm-hmm. And you guys get to do both. Kudos to you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> well, we are educators yes. and parents. Yes. But yes. I think every parent should be an educator at some point. And mm-hmm. We have educators in our family as yeah. well. Important Gu- role. Guitar question for Ryan. When a player wants to learn to play fast, lead guitar, it's usually suggested he or she practices scales. Not so excited. I guess you're not excited about <laughs> scales. But here's another school of thought. Find a favorite lead guitar part. For example, the solos on AC's DC Back in Black or Alter Bridge Isolation. Two of my personal choices. Practice them. This method provides necessary development as actual melody. I'm certain there are other sides to this controversy. What are your thoughts? Thanks again for the lively vids and for your always interesting comments. Have a killer day. Thanks. Yeah, there's a lot of tips out there for lead guitar stuff. And some people do maybe overly focus on the uh, technical aspect of just running your scales constantly. Mm-hmm. And then there are other people who do just say, well, just go find your favorite solo and just learn that solo. And, you know, I think separately, there, there's merits to both of those. Yeah, they both have their um, pros. All, all scales, I mean, all solos, guitar, you know, speedy, shreddy stuff, they all... It comes from a scale or arpeggios. So knowing your scale shapes and arpeggios, that's what you're doing. Um, learning other, I think learning other people's solos is very beneficial. Mm-hmm. But you know, you also have to be careful that when you go to play a solo, that you don't sound like Angus every time you play a solo because you've learned all of Angus's licks or you've learned all of whoever's licks. Mm-hmm. So that's what's going to come out. I think a mixture of those two things are good. I think practicing scale fragments, like just you know, two strings, like the middle two strings of your scale, you know, or uh, breaking the scale into smaller bits and playing around with it uh, are important as well. So some people say stay away from learning solos, and I, I kind of disagree with that. I think you should learn them. I think there are, there is important technique. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're learning a solo, like I have students that we're doing some pull-off stuff. Well, I'll, they're working on hammer-ons and pull-offs. So I'll pull a snippet of a solo somewhere. They go, all right, here's this little bit from Mr. Crowley. And here's how this he's doing this thing. And you can see here's a practical application of this technique that we're working on. Um, but I think it is important to go ahead and take that technique or take that scale and try to make it something from you, right? Mm-hmm. How can you take it? So I think mixing a lot of those different elements is important. So great question, Perry. Thank you so much. There you go. Next question, please. Mm-hmm. You want to read it? Shall no, I read it? All right. read it. I'll read I'll it. I'll have my glasses on. Oh, I forget. Sorry. John Burdett. Howdy, y'all. <laughs> y'all haven't lost your groove. Just been a while. <laughs> yes, y'all do fantastic. I totally agree with you. Many folks who grew up with our teachers in many cities. Tough career. Yes, it is. Mm-hmm. Parents need to pay attention more so that what their kids are doing and in their lives 
There's nothing wrong with homeschooling. The system is messed up in many cities, yet some are fantastic. And that's that's absolutely true. Mm -hmm. Thumbs up to Ryan and Angela. Family, health, happiness is all that matters. Yes, it is. Uh, happy Memorial Day. Yes. Where's the question? I'm getting to it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Ryan, could you do some jamming with your Explorer through that rig? Just a minute or two. Would love to hear it. When you got the time, man, no rush. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think, I guess, I think it was from the, through the, mm -hmm. the EVH. Yeah, I need to do that. I, I keep my Gibson Explorer at home most days now. It's usually not here at the shop uh, or the lesson studio. But uh, yeah, I'll bring it back up because I need to do I need I need to do some videos with the Explorer, and I've actually yeah. been intending, thinking about doing it. So that was just a good reminder. The grandma, the yeah. grandma guitar. The grandma guitar. She's the grandmother of all guitars. Yes. Here at Arnie Music. She's the original. Yeah. She's the matriarch. <laughs> the longest running guitar that I've owned, I think. <laughs> except for the little bit. Maybe I'll bring out my tiny little first guitar, which is a little piece of junk toy. Yeah. But that doesn't count. I didn't learn to play on that. No, you didn't. Thanks, John. Appreciate it, man. Chuck J. Angela. Hey. If you could do a duet with one person at Carnegie Hall, mm. who would it be? Ryan, who would you play with at Madison Square Garden? If you both had one song to do together at the halftime of a Cowboys game, AT&T Stadium, what would you sing and play? That's three questions, I think. But uh, Oh my gosh, that's great. They're great could, questions. If you could do it at Carnegie Hall... Carnegie. Carnegie Hall. Carnegie Hall. Who would you do that with? Oh, my gosh. Um, if it's someone from the past, oh, gosh. Can it be anybody? It could be anybody. Oh. My first, very first thought out of the gate, the pop in my head, would be uh, Barbara Streisand. Hands down. That would be my, that would be ultimate. Because she's so, she's, she, um, is um, a teacher at heart, so she would be very forgiving if I didn't live up because she knows she's amazing. <laughs> so it wouldn't be any competition there, but it would. She's a very uh, she loves to like get the back and forth and teaching and stuff like that. Um, that I've heard she would be a gracious person to do that. Very with. gracious. Um, either that or so if I could pull somebody from the past, um, Etta James. To sing at last in Carnegie Hall with Etta James would just be magic. I would I would pay money to sing to to watch you sing with both the people. Oh my gosh, magic, just magic. <laughs> to just to see Etta James sing at last at Carnegie Hall would be magic. I wouldn't even I just could stand on stage next to her with like, you know, dopey face. <laughs> yeah. So who would you uh, do Madison Square Garden with? Who would I play Madison Square Garden with? Well, who do you think it would be? It would be Metallica. It would be Metallica. <laughs> Absolutely. That's it. Hands That's easy. Hands down. Me and Metallica, Madison Square Garden, sold out show, and you would love it. <laughs> or I would love it. I don't yes. know. It would be Or a duet with James. Or I would sing a duet with James Hetfield at Carnegie Hall. I could do that. Uh, yes, exactly. Now, what would we do as a oh, duet together? If we did a Dallas song Cowboys together, the Dallas Cowboys AT and T halftime game, it would probably be a Metallica song, right? Yes. Yeah. No? Nothing That'd else matters. Fun. That would be fun because no, 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 we've no. done it before. I'm joking. I'm joking. I really. kid. A kid. A kid. Yes. <laughs> I don't know. That's hard. Wow. I mean, really, honestly, and we should be ashamed of ourselves. We don't really perform together. Um, I think the last time we actually, I mean, other than recitals, the student recitals, but that's not right. us. Was well, actually, the Christmas we did the Christmas. We have a video of it doing how many kings, mm -hmm. and that was like the last time. But before that, it it's been a couple of years since we really just the. And even then, we had Steve on the stage with us. Yeah, it was you know just the two of us. We we did I think just the two. Uh, Amazing Grace, the Chris Tomlin, My Chains Are Gone version. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so we don't really, you know, even though we, this is our, you know, job and dream, it's just not 
we never well, we don't have time. The, uh, yeah, that, that's the trick. The the something we'll have to give for us to. Be yeah, able we to have. I mean, something. we have friends who. I mean, there are some small places to play around Canton and East Texas where you could go as acoustic guitar and a singer duo type thing and do some some gigs like that. Mm-hmm. And we have friends that do that, but we just don't have the time <laughs> to do it. I mean, between having the store. And having an absolutely full roster of students that we teach, mm-hmm. I think people kind of forget that sometimes. <laughs> they, they'll call or ask for something ask, or email me, you know, and I don't email them back immediately. It's like, well, I, I do have like eight students in a row to teach today. And not only that, it's, it's, you know, <laughs> like, we we're, do like we were talking about our family, you know, our family is really important. And a lot of times... Um, you see it all the time in songs, you know, or in people's lives that, where there's always a regret of not spending time with the people who you love the most because all the stuff will fade. Like we rotate students out, you know, every two or three years, you know, we have a good flow of students because that's just life. Kids change interests and stuff like that. Or but this away. And our children are forever. They're our family. So we try not to add anything else that will take away from that. Because in the end, you know, when our boys are grown, we can go ahead and start doing stuff like that. You know, we'll just be in our 40s. So um, to us right now, you know, any of our extra time is spent with family. So, but um, or doing it's, always, YouTube. it's always cool to think if, I, if we could, if we did, if we had that, if we, you know, maybe that would be. That I think would be we would have time. to do a Metallica song because Metallica should have played a halftime at a Cowboys game by now. Right. Or at a Super Bowl. And they haven't. And that's just criminally wrong. Ugh. So I think, I think we could, I think we could do nothing else matters. It, uh, unless there's something else you'd rather do. And then we'll do that. Nothing really comes to mind. Okay, then. Maybe some Led Zeppelin. Sure. Maybe some Anna James. Yeah, sure. Whatever you want to do. (laughs) Whatever. Whatevs. Whatevs. I'm going to play some Metallica today. (laughs) Whatevs. Uh, the police. What'd you do? They're just going to the nursing home down there. Oh, probably so. Those crazy nursing home folks. Yeah, they like uh, to potty. I would uh, <laughs> I would echo Angela's sentiments. It's just a time issue, really, and you know, just just doing YouTube videos mm-hmm. as you know, not super consistently that we do. I mean, I try to put out at least one a week, if not more. But just doing that on top of like then trying to gig full time and the run a business yes. and you know run a full teaching schedule and you know everything else. It's kind of one of those things. Mm-hmm. It's not a priority necessarily right now. Nope. And I get musical fulfillment and enjoyment playing wise out of teaching students. Yeah. So, and and we, we do, both perform we play at church separately at our uh, at churches. So yeah, I mean we do play yeah. every week, <laughs> just not together. Just not together. <laughs> but different. that'll change. That'll change eventually. Mark, if you're watching, yeah, he probably not watch it. He might. He might. He, I doubt it. He just doesn't have a page to comment. He just won't comment. <laughs> Anyways. So, uh, yeah, yeah. There you go, Chuck. Great question. Thank you for there that. You go. Awesome. And I busted out the microphone today, so we'll see how the audio is this time. I think it'll be good. GXL2200 <laughs> by CAD Audio. Well, it's raining like crazy. Oh, my gosh. So yeah, you can't go straight with, with this weather. You can't have straight hair with the... It'll end up like this anyways. 1,000% humidity. <laughs> And rain. And rain. So, all right. Thank you guys so much for uh, the questions this week for our Ask RNA. Yes. If you have any questions for next week's Ask silver, RNA. Silver Surfer RNA. Silver Surfer RNA. No, it's not for sale. You can't buy that shirt. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I get in trouble because my, my printer prints these shirts for Angela just as a goof or as fun. And people yeah. like, oh, can we get that? Because she's, she's so awesome. Nope. No. <laughs> it's not cost effective for us. Anyways, <laughs> thank y'all so much. Please leave a comment or a question below. We appreciate those. And then uh, keep the music alive. Don't forget it. Memory card. Wheelie, wheelie. Wheelie, wheelie. Wheelie. What are you doing? I don't know. I'm so excited. <laughs> I need a Dr. Pepper. No. At least a little one. Maybe. <laughs>